Am I going? Hi, welcome back to Pin Cut Sew. This has sort of been a quilting channel lately, just what I've been feeling like sewing these days, but I do have some non-quilty projects in the works, another doll project, and then a really fun project that I've been making for literally decades that I can't wait to share with you, but I first need to get some of these quilt projects out of my tiny sewing room so that I can free up the space for those other things. So today I'm going to show you how to make this quilt block. I call it the long game because it's a checkerboard, but it's long, very creative, I know. And I'm going to add sashing to this quilt. So sashing isn't something that I do very often, but I didn't have enough fabric to make more blocks and the quilt just needs to be a little bit bigger. So this time I'm going to add some sashing. I have this perfectly matching solid on hand and sashing is one of those things that seems like it would be kind of a no brainer, but it's something that's kind of easy for people to mess up. And so I'm going to show you how I do it. And to me, this is the most foolproof way and it works better than like cutting all your sashing in advance. So even when I buy a quilt pattern and it tells me what size to cut my sashing strips, I never do that. I always wait until I have my finished blocks ready and then I cut the sashing. So if sashing is something you've never done or had trouble doing, I'm going to show you how to do it. But also I made you another free quick quilt guide to learn how to make this block. You don't have to do it with the sashing. You could just make a bunch of these blocks. If I were gonna make more, I would have made 24 blocks. I only had enough fabric for 16. And I got this fabric. This was one of these super fun Moda scrap bags. You can get these on Amazon. I'm sure you can get them other places too, but basically it's a surprise. I really appreciate that Moda does this instead of throwing these things in the trash. So it's really like a jelly roll, not like a jelly roll. It's a jelly roll, but it, it's flawed. So like in this one that I got, it had like a strip that looked like this and it didn't quite have, I think it was one or two short of a real jelly roll. And then in the first one I ordered, all of the strips had a selvage edge on them, which is fine. That's what I used to make that half square baby quilt that I made in a recent video. And so I just think these are so fun. And this one they sent me had the cutest sewing themed prints. Is it gonna focus? This one is scissors. I don't know if you can see it. There was scissors, pins, little embroidery fabrics. And so instead of making a quilt to sell, like I usually do for these videos, I'm making this one to keep because of course I need a sewing themed quilt in my life. So I'm gonna finish this one and teach you how to do it along the way. Let's get started. Also, before I start, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the positive response to my ebook that I wrote about teaching sewing camps and classes to kids. I have gotten the best responses from people who have already purchased it and read it and are inspired to get started already. And that's exactly the reason that I wrote it. So I'm really, really excited to get that out there and just also very thankful for your good reaction to it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Usually a jelly roll comes with 20 strips that are two and a half inches wide and they're cut from selvage to selvage. So the entire width of the fabric. If you don't have a jelly roll or if you wanna kind of make your own, you just can cut strips that are two and a half inches. Find enough coordinating fabrics in your stash to do that with. And then you'll have a pre-made, a homemade jelly roll. My jelly roll didn't quite have enough to make all of my blocks. So I supplemented with some fabrics from my stash, which worked out just fine. And of course, you don't have to do this strip method. You can also just cut individual two and a half inch blocks. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just put a strip together, two of my strips. I saved these ones for my last block so I could show you. And I'm just gonna go stitch these in a quarter inch seam. Okay, now I'm going to find the center of this long strip and cut it in half. Mine were folded in half on the center, so I'm just gonna cut there. And now I'm going to, I haven't pressed these yet. I don't really need to yet. I'm gonna open this out and sew these together so that then I'll have four strips sewn together. Okay, so now I have these four strips sewn together and I'm going to go press seams, all of the seams in one direction. I'm gonna press them all this way. Okay, so here's my pressed strip. Get that out of the way so I don't cut it on accident. And now we're going to cut this strip into two and a half inch pieces. So let me cut off the selvage first. 
And if all goes well, you should get eight pieces out of this at two and a half inches. Oh, I desperately need a new rotary blade. I have them on order and they're arriving today, thankfully. I tried the, I'm going to try the titanium rotary blades. wonder if they'll last a little bit longer because I just replaced this last week. I know it was last week because I mentioned it in the video that I filmed last week. <laughs> to make sure I'm getting these nice and straight, I am lining the center strip line here up with a line on my ruler just to make sure I'm cutting straight and that my squares aren't going to go wonky. Do not want a wonky checkerboard, although that might be fun. Maybe I'll do that next. <laughs> Ooh, actually that would be really cute. I can already think of how you would do it, but today is not that day. Okay, this is number seven, I believe. Oh, my rotary blade. I guess I'm not in danger of cutting myself on this one. I love these little scissors. They're so cute. Okay, so now I have eight strips and I am simply going to flip every other one like so and then you can see how the checkerboard goes together so now i'm just going to start sewing these together and since i pressed the seams all one direction and then i flipped every other one my seams are going to nest together perfectly just like that while i'm sewing and then i will have my perfect elongated checkerboard block Okay, my finished block. It was so fast. Even with filming, I made this in like, I don't know, definitely less than 10 minutes. Okay, so the next thing I need to do before I start adding my sashing is go over to my board and arrange my blocks because I haven't really placed them yet in the way that I want them. And then we'll get started on the sashing. Check it out, my rotary blades came while I was filming. It was super awesome because I really didn't want to cut sashing strips with this old rotary blade. Okay, so when I first started quilting, little 20 year old Nikki, I assumed that to make sashing, you just cut a bunch of strips and just sew it and then trim the sashing after you've sewn them on. And what I ended up with was sashing that was like bubbly and buckly <laughs> and not what you want. And so I learned the hard way that that's not actually what you do. It actually makes sense. So if, if that is what you have tried to do and failed, then I really don't blame you. Don't feel bad about it. Instead, first we want to cut the vertical sashing. So you get a finished block. Okay, here's my top left block. I'm going to measure it. My block is 16 and a half inches. I'm going to make my sashing two and a half inches. So I'm going to cut all my vertical strips first and I need 18 of them because there is six per row. Wow, I barely have to push down at all. This is nice. I'll link you to these titanium rotary cutter blades. It was so cheap for this pack. I think it was $11.99 for a pack of 10. I don't know if you've ever bought a rotary blade at the fabric store, but they're ridiculously overpriced. I think I paid $8 for one the other day because they weren't on sale. Okay, now I'm going to cut these down into their proper 16 and a half inch lengths. And probably cut four at a time with this awesome rotary blade. Okay, put this over here, line it up and cut at 16 and a half inches. Okay. Those I'll put in my scrap bin. So I'm going to just keep cutting my sashing strips until I have all 18 cut just to make it easier. Then I can do all the sewing at once. I am not yet going to cut the horizontal strips. That will be much longer than these. I'm going to wait till I have my rows all sewn together and then I can get the exact width that I need. Okay, I've made all of my sashing strips my vertical ones. And so now... I'm going to start sewing my rows together. On the beginning, you know, I had five blocks laid out like so. I'm going to put sashing on the outside of the first and last ones. So it'll go sashing block, sashing block, sashing block, and then end with sashing again. And I'm going to do that for all three rows.
Alrighty, I have all three of my rows sewn together with sashing at the beginning, sashing at the end, and sashing in between. So now that I have all my rows complete, I'm going to cut the longer sashing. The reason I don't cut sashing until all of my blocks are done and then I don't cut my long sashing till all my rows are done is because there can be so much discrepancy in seam allowances. So especially before I got this fancy machine with the very accurate quarter inch foot, I used to mess up kind of a lot, not mess up, but I, my seam allowances were just not very consistent. And so if I were following a pattern or something that told me what size to cut the sashing, inevitably my block would be different than that and the sashing wouldn't fit like it was supposed to. So the best way to do this in my experience is after you have sewn the blocks and then after you've sewn the rows. And then instead of just measuring it end to end, cause now I'm gonna calculate how long I need my sashing pieces, I'm gonna fold it in half. So here's the center mark, which should be right in between these two blocks. I'm going to measure it without stretching it. And it is 26 inches. And so what is that? 52, 52 inches, right? 54, 54 inches. <laughs> Gosh, me and the quilt math, y'all. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to create 54 inch strips. So when you're cutting, especially the longer pieces, you want to cut it so that the stretch is going lengthwise on your sashing pieces so that it's not so rigid when you're trying to pin it on and make it fit. So if you cut them selvage to selvage, that's the perfect way. So I'm just going to cut. I need four strips total, but I am going to have to piece them together to be 56 inches. So I'm just going to cut several two and a half inch strips. If I cut six, I think that should be perfect. Okay, I'm going to cut the selvages off. Okay, so I'm actually going to go stitch these together from end to end and make them into one very long strip. So then I can cut 54 inch lengths off of them. Okay. Now I have one long strip and I pressed my seams open. My iron is spitting up everywhere. If anyone can recommend a good iron to me, I am, think I'm pretty much ready for one. Okay, let me find an end. Now I'm going to cut it into 56 inch lengths. This is more easily done if I just take half of that. Remember it was 26. And I find the 26 inch point, which is here. And I actually am going to need this halfway point when I sew them on. So I'm going to mark it on both ends and you'll see why in a minute. Then I'll move, oh look, my stitching came out. I'm gonna have to fix that. Then I'll move my pin over here to the one and I'll find, see what my iron is doing? The 26 inch mark again, and that is where I will cut it. So I'm going to continue to cut the rest of my strips right after I fix this one. Okay, so here's my first sashing strip. I'm going to cut Four more? One. Yeah, I need five total. I think I said I need four total, but I need five. I don't know if you can see my whole mat, but I'm just following the 26 inch line up here so you can see it. Normally I would do this down at the bottom, but it's not quite on the screen. So here's my 26 inch mark. Move that back over to the zero and cut. Not sure. This one's not quite long enough but I have these extra pieces that I can add on to it from earlier. So let's see how much I still need. This is perfect. Okay, so now I have five sashing strips. It might be intuitive for you, as it was for me when I first started, to just start pinning this from end to end, but that is actually not what we're going to do. The reason we marked the middle is because it pins much more evenly, or I think actually when I first started quilting, I just started sewing. <laughs> and then when I got to the end, I was either surprised because there was too little sashing left or there was too much sashing left. So this is how you pin on your sashing. You find the middle of your sashing. Let me just make sure that I was accurate here. Yes, so 26 inches on either side of my pins here. And then I already know the center of my quilt because it's easy to find in this block. So I'm going to pin the center first, and then I'm going to go over here to one end and pin. And you can see that there's quite a bit of give in your quilt because of all those seams and the stretchiness of the fabric. And that's why you want to, let me use these. 
that's why you want to to cut your sashing with the stretch of your fabric because it helps it to fit evenly it should fit perfectly whereas if you cut it against the stretch it might be too rigid so if you need to stretch it to fudge a little bit of an area where maybe your seam allowances weren't perfect it will be harder to do if it's not cut with a stretch and then i'm going to come over here and pin this end thankfully my sashing fits beautifully for once my quilt math was correct <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to go do this, and I'm going to sew a sashing strip on the top, on the bottom, and in between my rows. And that will be five strips total. Okay, I have two rows of sashing on. I always get really excited at this point because my top is almost finished. And I have a couple of notes. So you can see I did the top, and then I did this middle one. And I still have my pin here because I'm about to attach the next row. So that's why I put two pins there. Um, one other thing is that when I sew on the final sashings, I usually backstitch. You don't usually backstitch in quilting, but I find that these longer sashing pieces tend to pull apart at the very ends as I'm working with the quilt in the quilting process. So I just go ahead and backstitch. And then third, I press these seams toward the sashing as I did with these sashings too, just to reduce bulk because there's already bulky seams on this side. So we press toward the sashing. And then lastly, what was the last one? Oh, when you're sewing on the sashing, usually you sew it with the sashing on the top. You want to make sure that all your seams underneath are going in the direction that you pressed them because they're probably in different directions. You just want to feel with your fingers as you're sewing to make sure you're getting them flipped the correct way. So I'm going to keep going and then I'm almost done. Finished. Looks really good. It's hard to get a whole thing on camera. Oh, it goes this way. I think it's really pretty. I'm going to finish it. I think I'm going to do some free motion quilting. I haven't done a video on that. So if you want a tutorial on free motion quilting, that just means when you move the stitches around whichever direction that you want. I'm going to do like a loopy design, which I've done before on a Christmas quilt, and it's my favorite quilt. And so I'm going to do that on this. Make sure you go grab the free quick quilt guide from my website. I'll put a link in the description. So I'm going to go finish this, and I'll be sure and show you when I'm done. I'll see you soon. Bye.